Insulin is a hormone made by special cells in your pancreas called beta cells. When you eat, insulin is released into your bloodstream where it helps to move glucose from the food you have eaten into the cells where it is used to produce energy. In people with type 2 diabetes, your body still produces insulin, but your cells reject it, and your insulin is not strong enough to force its way into your cells to deliver its glucose load. This inability is called insulin resistance. To compensate, the body makes more insulin, but eventually cannot make enough to maintain the correct levels of blood glucose. Lifestyle changes can delay the need for tablets and insulin to keep blood glucose levels in the normal range. When blood glucose levels can no longer be controlled by a healthy lifestyle and tablets, then insulin is needed in addition. It is important to understand that this is just the way type 2 diabetes behaves. Insulin cannot be given as a tablet as it will be destroyed in the stomach. This means that no insulin would survive to pass into the bloodstream to move glucose into your cells to make energy and keep your blood glucose levels in the healthy range. The only way that insulin can be taken into your body is by injection. This isn't as unpleasant as it sounds. The range of injection devices and tiny needles available today make injecting insulin much easier than most people imagine. When starting insulin, your doctor and credentialed diabetes educator will help you to learn how to give yourself insulin and find the right dose to reduce your blood glucose levels to good levels. Your need for insulin varies according to your own individual reaction to insulin. Your weight will also influence your need, as being overweight causes a greater degree of insulin resistance. Your lifestyle, including your exercise and eating patterns, will also influence your need for insulin. Your doctor and credentialed diabetes educator will work out with you what type of insulin is right for you and how much insulin you need. After an injection, insulin is absorbed by your body and slowly released into your bloodstream where it helps to lower blood glucose levels by helping to move the glucose into the body cells. Some insulins have a peak. This means these types of insulin gradually build up in the bloodstream until they reach a certain level or their peak, which they stay at for some hours, and then they slowly reduce in the amount until they are gone. When the insulin has reached the highest concentration, or the peak, they work at maximum effect to lower blood glucose levels. Then, as the concentration of the insulin in the bloodstream gradually decreases, the blood glucose level begins to slowly rise again. The time it takes for insulin to peak and wear off differs according to the type of insulin. Insulin can be injected by an insulin syringe, an insulin pen with a fine needle, or via an insulin pump. At present, insulin pumps are not available for people with type 2 diabetes unless they pay for all expenses themselves. Each method is chosen for a particular purpose and is based on an individual's needs. Your doctor or credentialed diabetes educator can teach you the correct injection and dose measurement techniques. Syringes are manufactured in different sizes. These sizes are used depending on the amount of insulin being injected. To avoid under or overdosing, it is important that you know how to measure the insulin dose in your chosen syringe. Your credentialed diabetes educator can help you with this. Syringes are free for people registered with the National Diabetes Service Scheme, the NDSS. If you want to find out more about the NDSS, phone 1300 136 588. Syringes should only be used once and then disposed of in an appropriate syringe disposal unit. Insulin delivery devices are another common way of administering insulin. They are referred to as pens because they are shaped like a pen. Most people find pen devices easier and more convenient to use than syringes. If you have difficulties with your sight or have problems with arthritis, you may find a pen device easier to use. You don't have to worry about placing the needle in the wrong place and you'll be certain of administering the correct dosage of insulin that you require. Non-disposable pens need an insulin cartridge which fits into the device. When the original cartridge is finished, a new cartridge is inserted. Some pen devices are pre-filled with insulin and the whole device is disposable when the insulin has been used. Your doctor or credentialed diabetes educator will advise you on the one that suits your needs and lifestyle. Pen needles are free for people registered with the NDSS 
and should only be used once and then disposed of in an appropriate sharps container. You should discuss your injection technique with your doctor or credentialed diabetes educator. Insulin is injected mostly into the fat under the skin of your abdomen. There are few nerve cells in your tummy so it's not painful. You should not inject insulin into muscle or directly into the blood. Absorption of insulin varies depending on the part of the body into which you inject. The tummy absorbs insulin the most evenly and steadily and is the recommended site. The buttocks and thighs are less commonly used because the insulin is absorbed too quickly from these areas. It's very important to give each injection in a slightly different spot around your tummy and it's important not to inject into any lumps or scars on your abdomen. If you have any questions regarding the use of injectable insulin, talk to your GP or your credentialed diabetes educator.